boys and girls. There you go. Well, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome into AZ Arena for today's President's Day matchup between the Natick Red Hawks and your Brockton Boxers, as always. For the sixth time in four days, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and today I'm joined alongside my broadcast partner, Kevin Cairo, the Athletic Director of Brockton High School, Mr. Cairo. A very successful weekend, to say the least, for the Brockton Boxers Athletic Department, and looking to continue that success into the last week of the regular season here against Natick. Yeah. When you said, what are they, what's their name? Natick what? The Red Hawks. Red Hawks, I thought it was the Canadians. They look like it. They sure do. Natick wearing Montreal's home red jerseys with a blue stripe across the chest with a red and blue N on the chest. Brockton on the other hand, their home whites, red and black trim and the boxer head on the stomach. So let's see what kind of a start the boxers can get. I think that's going to really dictate what happens the rest of the game. Anthony Paul to Zach Sylvia. His slap shot is gloved down by sophomore goaltender James Herring. Anthony Paul, absolutely worth noting, is a little bit under the weather. That's according to his dad. According to his dad. Yeah. Hockey player, he'll get over it. Natick winning the faceoff number 20, fighting for it. That's Matt Sullivan. A lot of high-powered offense on this Natick team. They have two 10-goal scorers and a nine-goal scorer, and that's a lot of game, uh, a lot of goals. They put up 59 through their first 21 games. Well, that's pretty good. Not to brag, but Brockton probably put up 59 in their big three-divisional matchups. <laughs> Jalen Bridges to Paul off of the face-off win. Natick able to clear it out into the neutral zone. Picked up by Zach Sylvia. Sylvia dumping it in. Frank Atten to chase it down. Sylvia launching another one. Stick save by Herring. And Natick picks up the rebound on the half boards. Nice. Kirkshank able to bat it away to Paul. Paul makes an excellent move. And now his shot into the chest of Herring and he holds on for the faceoff. Anthony Paul certainly doesn't look yeah. sick through hey. the first two minutes. Three shots on net and under two minutes. Not bad. Not, not bad. Brockton coming off back-to-back -back wins. The two to one win against the Norwood Mustangs this past Friday in which Paul scored the game winning goal with 35 seconds to go and six to nothing victory over the Durfee Hilltoppers on Saturday. Another shot, this one blocked away by a defender out in front. Loose puck in front, Nathan else for me can't get it. Zach Sylvia launching one pass save by is. Herring. And Natick finally able to get it out into the neutral zone, number 13 into the Brockton zone for what seems like the first time this game. That's junior forward John Carr, two goals, five assists for him on the year. Peyton Sylvia into the corner. And El Shami able to clear it out into the neutral zone. Sylvia has trouble handling it. He puts a hit on to let Sylvia have some time to grab the puck. And number two with it, Sean Harney, one of the 10 goal scorers for the Red Hawks. Whoa, look out. A headhunter just through a the bit, slot. Just a bit outside. Robbie Peeney for the Red Hawks, sending it out in front, a shot in, and Ooh. blocker saved by Adam oh. Stagnone on the rebound. Shot from behind the net. And Natick. Has an opportunity, number two, Sean Harney. Harney skating with it, starting and stopping, and it's picked up and dumped in by Brockton, and they will go for a full change. Number 19, uh, Tim Mulholland. Mulholland sending it out in front off the skate of Stag. Seems like he didn't know exactly where it was. Now Harney with it behind the net, sending it out in front, and it deflect off. Crookshank skate to the end boards. Brockton able to get it back out into the neutral zone. Louis Goyette sending one in on Herring, and he covers up for the faceoff. 
11.45 left to go in the first period. Still scoreless between the Natick Red Hawks and the Brockton Boxers. President's Day action here at AZ Arena. Palermo losing the face off to the Red Hawks. Now number 18, Ben Martin has trouble clearing it for the boxers. A shot off the end of the glove of Stagno, number 24 with it, Al Arno, the nine goal scorer, 15 points on the year for him. Kirkshank tried the indirect self pass. Natick had to tag up so they wouldn't be off sides. Rockton clearing it all the way down now. Deflected in the neutral zone, but taken by Al Arno. Arno dumping it in the Brockton zone. Natick will change out. Arno shot off the blocker of Stagno to the end boards. Jake Reisner can't handle the deflection off the end boards. And Natick forced to tag up yet again. Stagno playing this one to the end boards. Peyton Sylvia. And a pop-up shot from number 20 of the Red Hawks, Matt Sullivan, the senior captain. Brockton now floundering a little bit in their defensive zone. Frank Atten looking for some offensive magic. He deets, shoots backhand, and it deflects to the half boards. Kind of popped up a little bit high on him. Number 22 has nowhere to go with it. Charlie Mulholland. And Brockton right back into the Red Hawks zone. Ten minutes to go in the first period, still scoreless. Zach Sylvia laying the boom to move the puck closer to the slot, unable to get a shot off. The shot, stick saved by Stagnon and Arno behind the net. Uh, that's Charlie Mulholland fighting against two boxers. Coming away with it is Jake Reisner. Reisner to Tucker Green. And Frank Atten comes away with the loose puck. Back and forth action in the first six minutes of this game. Marissa Massaro fighting for it. Natick's half boards and Tucker Green dumping it into the Brockton zone. He loses an edge, takes a seat on his pants. And Natick trying to reset in the Brockton zone. A shot from Scott Reynolds. Massaro comes away with it. Massaro tipping it trying to get it to Peter Sylvia. Ultimately taken by Scott Reynolds. Uh-oh, look out. Good save. That shot coming from Robbie Peeney, the senior captain, into the chest of Adam Stagg, known. Natick winning the uh -oh. faceoff out in front, oh, and boy. this one tipped. might have hit the knob of the stick of Stagnone into the protective netting, so Brockton escaping one there. They're going to rule it did not go off Brockton's goaltender, so a neutral zone faceoff. It's a good break. Just can't get Keelis. Shot, stick saved by Stagg, he's down, and the rebound to the end boards. Number 18, Dylan Arno. Brockton coming over with the loose puck, Nathan L. Shami into the Red Hawks zone, has nowhere to go with it, so he tries to get it deep, unsuccessful, Natick taking over, a shot out of nowhere, and it's saved by James Herring. Well, the starting goaltender for the Native Red Hawks has had some successes this year. 15 and two-thirds game played. 
He's allowed 35 goals on 405 shots, so yeah. that's good for a 2.24 goals against average. Well, I guess the goalie that we face off against Wednesday has allowed nine goals all year from Walpole. And Noel would score three times on him. So we could have some successes. We tied Walpole last year 3-3 three to three here at AZ Arena. I think that hit the ref. It wouldn't surprise me. Knock some sense into him. <laughs> Peyton Sylvia chasing this one down. Speaking of goaltenders, James Herring, the last number to rattle off is Louis Goyette brings oh, it towards out. the Red Hawk zone. James Herring putting up a Vesna worthy save percentage of 914. That's pretty good. That's really good. And only a sophomore, too. Only a sophomore. Sent all the way down. Icing waved off against the Red Hawks. 6.45 to go in the first period. Still scoreless in what has been pretty action. But Natick's starting to tilt the ice. Yeah, the ice I see is a, it is a little bit tilted. And then once again, they're playing a little more physical than the boxers are. Jalen Bridges fighting with Sean Harney. Harney comes away with it, stops and pops from beyond the net. No good. Sent out to Reynolds at the blue line. He dumps it around the boards deep. Justin Crookshank high off glass looking for Paul. And he's going to tag up. And they do. Justin Crookshank behind Stagnone. Off the glass looking for Peyton Sylvia. He goes off the glass for Atten. And that runs into some trouble. And it hit a boxer on the bench. So. Got to see who number nine is. Off. Fanatic. He has more facial hair than I do. We may have to get a. Birth certificate yeah. in between periods. One Captain of the 10 goal scorers. Robbie Penny. 10 goals, 8 assists for Penny. He's good for 18 points on the year. Oh, oh, Loose out in front, sent out and kept in by Jack O'Day. Oh. O'Day turns the puck over. Two on two up ice oh, for the boxers, up. Anthony Paul. With nowhere to move to, Al Birmingham. Uh, that was a good, Zach good defensive play. He just took Anthony, went right to the body, and just took him right out of the play with a good clean check. Birmingham tipped off Paul into the neutral zone. Now you can see Paul not skating really at 100% speed. Sent into the beyond the goal line, number 18, fighting for it, Dylan Arno. Uh, they have somebody right in front of the net that they have to get him out of there. <laughs> Jalen Bridges putting the hit on to move the puck. And the number 12 getting decked. Bridges goes off the boards looking for Atten. Atten back to Bridges. Up to Paul. 4.51 to go in the first period. Still scoreless. Rockton trying to get it going in the offensive zone. Zach Sylvia oh, launching a, a shot. Good shot. That's a real good shot on that. Kind of handcuffed Terry just a little bit. The rebound went towards Natick's bench. Brockton able to keep it in, however. Out oh. to the slot, no boxer on the receiving end. And it's cleared out by Dylan Arno. Now Marissa Massaro in. Off the boards to get the puck deep. Brockton changes out. Look at her, she's right back after. She got drilled a couple times against Durfee. I mean, into the boards real hard. We're going to have a oh. penalty, I believe. They're offsides, waved off against the Red Hawks. Thought we were going to see a trip. Nathan El Shami has his stick assaulted by three Red Hawks. And Brock is still able to get a shot off. This one deflecting off of a stanchion behind the net. Peter Sylvia able to get the puck deep again. Justin Crookshank, the defenseman. Ooh. Forward of the goal line, sending it out front. No boxer could get a clean shot off. Sylvia chasing this one down, and oh. we're going to have the first penalty of the game as Massaro hit the ice. It is going to be a trip against number 20, Matt Sullivan, the senior 
captain of the Red Hawks headed to the box. A minute 30 second power play for their boxers, the first of the game. 3.35 left to go in the first period. Zach Sylvia off the faceoff win for Anthony Paul. Paul to Atten. Atten skating with speed behind the uh, Red Hawk uh, net, uh, and uh -oh, Natick takes one, over. Possibly. <coughs> and sending it long was Sean Harney instead of capitalizing on the possible odd man rush. Zach Sylvia and Jalen Bridges oh, fighting out. for it. Robbie Pinney coming away with it. Penny shot into the right arm of Zach Sylvia, and he stops and able to clear it out to Frank Atten. Atten leaving it for Bridges. Bridges can't gain clean entry, so Natick now with a two-on-one. Oh, boy. A saucer pass out to Harney. His backhanded <coughs> shot went well wide. You would never know the boxers were on the power play. Marissa Massaro. And hopefully they can regroup here and set something up. Brockton unable to keep it in. Now Anthony Paul losing it. Skating on a sharp angle, looking for Massaro. Doesn't connect, and Natick takes over. 20 seconds left on, we'll call it a power play, but Natick's had more opportunities than the boxers. Stagnone making a save. As Natick gets the shorthanded opportunity, and he holds on for the faceoff. 14 seconds left to go on the power play. 2.19 in the first period. Jack Sylvia off the faceoff win. D to D to Justin Crookshank. Crookshank backhanding it back for Sylvia. Sylvia up to Goyette. Power play is up as a last second spin around shot by Nathan El Shami finds the glove of James Herring. 2.02 to go in the first period and still scoreless. Well, boxers definitely have had their opportunities early on. Just waiting for one to sneak by. Crookshank unable to keep it in. But dumping it back in, the boxers tag up. Peyton Sylvia, more of the same. Matt Sullivan, fresh out of the box. Dumping it all the way oh down, boy. looking for the break. And Stagnone playing it off of number 24. A shot oh, out in front oh, and a good save oh, by Stag on the oh, rebound. Boy. And Stag with a couple of good stick Jeez. saves. And he's able to finally get up a minute and 30 to go. And that could prove to be a turning point for either one of these teams, either offensively for the Red Hawks or the Boxers with a jolt in their hearts on the other end of the ice. Anthony Paul elbowed in the face. The arm stayed down. And Peyton Sylvia poking it away very nicely from Robbie Pinney. One minute to go in the first period. Still scoreless. The Natick Red Hawks and the Brockton Boxers. Bridges turning it over oh, and now a 2 on 0. Oh. Harney off the oh. stick of Adam Stag. No to the end boards. No interference. Oh. You want to talk about living dangerously down here in your own end. Now Jalen Bridges, if he turns on the Jets, might have a semi-break. He launches oh. a shot stick save by Herring with 30 seconds to go. And this one deflecting into the Natick bench. Offensive zone faceoff. Not much time to go in the first period. 31.3 seconds. Frank Atten. Winning the faceoff, but Natick taking over, sending it through the neutral zone. Peyton Sylvia in the Brockton end of the ice to Zach Sylvia. Sylvia back to Peyton. Oh, nice move. Peyton backhanding it into the Natick zone. Ten seconds to go. Sylvia comes up with yet another turnover. Last second slap shot off the glove of Herring. The buzzer sounds, the first period has come to an end. Still scoreless, zero to zero between the Natick Red Hawks and the Brockton Boxers. Mr. Carroll, talk about the successes you saw and what the Boxers need to work on going into the second period. 
Well, I, uh, you know, I was encouraged by them getting, I would say, at least a good six or seven quality scoring chances down at that end. Got a little sloppy in this end. That is not good. They, they won't be able to get away with that too much longer. Giving up the puck in your own zone, and, and uh, no, they dodged a couple bullets there. But they, they're playing physical, and this is a good team that they're up against. So I would call that a moral victory coming out of period one, nothing, nothing. Well, scoreless at the end of one, zero to zero, the Natick Red Hawks and the Brockton Boxers. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you second period action right after this. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Class, today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused. Fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise. Louise. Can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Coach, scoreless after one. Talk about some successes you had in the first and things you want to work on in the second. I thought we had good energy. Um, I just I thought um, they did a good job. They kind of dominated us down low in our zone. Uh, so we just made some adjustments with a D in the centers. They got to have uh, better switchers, better communication. Both teams have had some scoring opportunities. Do you think this one could turn into a goaltender's duel? Uh, it could. I mean, we uh, he did a good job of saving the first one. So we've got to get there for rebounds. Coach, good luck in the second. Thank you. Hey, Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey, guys, what are you doing? We're going sledding. We're going biking. Yeah. I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. It was great. Okay, honey, I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in, because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into AZ AF Arena for second period action between the Natick Red Hawks and the Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Join alongside my broadcast partner, Kevin Cairo. Scoreless after one, the Natick Red Hawks tilting the ice after the first five minutes, but unable to get one past Adam Stagnone. Brockton with a number of opportunities early, much the same story against James Herring. We talked with Coach Chris Cunningham. He said, keep the pressure up, put more pucks on net, and don't let them intimidate you. Yep. They've got a lot of big kids on this team that are more than six feet tall and very skilled. He said, don't let that get to you. We hung with them for the first yeah. period. We can hang with them all game. I agree. And it is. It's a little, post. Yeah, it's a little overwhelming to look down and just see the sea of red jerseys on the bench, and they have the depth, and I want to say that they dress 26 players but they can only put five out on the ice at a time. And uh, if Brockton sticks to its game plan and catches a couple breaks, I think the, the key to scoring on this goal is they're going to have to get more chances inside that 10, 15 foot range. Right now it's been a slap shot from the point and just outside the circle. They're going to have to let that puck loose a little close to the net. And I think that that would be um, a way to beat them. Only one penalty in the first. That one went against Matt Sullivan. Brockton unsuccessful on that power play. Oh, a shot oh, oh. off the hand, and Stag doesn't know where it is. Natick able to clear it out. Now Sullivan launches a shot, deflected off of the leg of one of the boxers out in front. Now indirect pass for Nathan L. Shami. Backhanding it out in front, a pop behind the net. Peter Sylvia for L. Shami. He's got some room. His backhanded uh -huh. shot into the glove of James Herring, the sophomore goaltender. Massaro oh, in front, boy. it's loose. Now Peyton Sylvia launching a shot, and this one deflected off the stick of Herring boy. and Brockton turn it, turning some, it on in the last 30 seconds. That's for the scoring chances right close to the net. A couple of rebounds, could have gone either way. 
Sylvia making a nice turn to get the puck. Peter, uh, Peyton Sylvia rather going down and the arm stayed down. Oh, we could down. have a three on two. Oh, Unable couldn't to connect. Handle the pass was Dylan Arno, the junior forward. And this one cleared out. Brockton very willingly changes out. Ben Martin, Brendan Palermo on the ice for the boxers. Brian Haswell, the sophomore, with it beyond the goal line for the Red Hawks. Shot blocker save, hitting the glass behind the net. And number 21 fighting in the corner, that's Joey Soma. Sent all the way down, 11.45 to go in the second period, still scoreless, Brockton a couple of very good scoring opportunities so far, and number 13, John Carr looking for one for the Red Hawks now. Carr off the boards looking for Soma, doesn't connect. It'll go all the way around to senior captain Scott Reynolds. And a shot from the point, and another right, save by Adam Stagno. Oh, we asked Coach Chris Cunningham if he sees this one shaping up as an old-fashioned goaltending duel. He said quite possibly. Yeah. So far, both teams have had chances. I mean, Natick just rang the post a little while ago. A little help from your friends never hurt. Yeah. Off the boards taken by Zach Sylvia. Brockton tags up, clean entry for Jalen oh, Bridges back oh, in the shot. Oh, that was a nice move. Atten couldn't get a stick on the rebound. Jalen Bridges with a nice move right out in front. Frank Atten and Brockton creating the turnover. Anthony Paul hit by two Red Hawks and the puck squirts loose. And that's one thing that Nadek does very well. If somebody gets within that scoring zone, they, they put a body on him. Here's and a semi break for number two. His shot went wide. That was Sean Harney. And I think that that's what the boxers are going to have to do. They're going to have to put their body on someone. Now a three on one up ice for the boxers. Anthony Paul, he launches a shot that deflected off the stick of Tucker Green to the end boards. Brockton can't get a rebound opportunity. Batting it down and, that's offside. and offside. That came outside the zone. A good attempt by number 19, the freshman Al Birmingham. 10-15 and left in an action-packed second period. A very good first five minutes. Natick ringing the post. Brockton with four or five quality scoring opportunities. Al Arno around the boards. Justin Crookshank fighting for it with Arno on the half boards. Massaro able to poke it out. Nathan El Shami can't get to it. Number 18, Dylan Ooh. Arno back in. He launches a shot. Oh, no. The block on the rebound. Now that's a goal that's for the Red Hawks. Completely unnecessary right there. I think one of our guys skated right by the puck and didn't even touch it. That's unfortunate. Nathan El Shami couldn't get back in time to negate that opportunity for the Red Hawks. Nine thirty-eight to go in the second period. One nothing Red Hawks over the Boxers. Wait, we're on the official scoring. It should be unassisted as a Boxer touched that puck before a Red Hawk. Put it into the back of the net. That goal scored by Ricky Mingolelli, assisted by Dylan Arno. That's Mingolelli's third goal of the season. Yeah, that was. I just think that 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 should have been avoided. It really should have been. It wasn't. A drawn up play, it wasn't like they had momentum, it was a shot and that rebounded and just it's a mental one lapse. of those things. Yeah, that was, that was definitely a mental lapse on the defense.
Now time for the boxers to put one in the net the other way. Free cat, an indirect self pass. It's a foot race. Anthony Paul unable to tap it to himself. Brockton tagging up and putting the puck right back in. Nadek back the other way out in front. Peyton Sylvia lowers the shoulder to create separation. Frank Atten backhanding it into the Red Hawk zone as he took a hit. The stick went flying and I believe off sides against the boxers. That's a two line pass, right? You can't do that. Three line pass, it seemed. Frank Atten is headed to the box. So what? He was on the bench. Interference. I think I missed something. You and everybody else except one referee in here. Minute 30 second power play for the Red Hawks. Frank Atten in the box for interference. Nadek setting up the power play. Number 23 launching a shot oh. blocked away by Marissa Massaro. Number 23 calling for the one-timer. Scott Reynolds doesn't take the shot. And now a shot deflected to the end boards. Reynolds on the one-timer, saved by Stag and Brockton. Oh, unable to clear, clear it out. Zone. Reynolds able to backhand it around to number nine. His shot off the blocker of Stag known into the protective netting. That was Robbie Pinney and Sean Harney launching the shots for the Red Hawks. And this is the final week of the regular season for the Brockton Boxers. As Pinney loses the face off to Jalen Bridges. Reynolds to number 18, Dylan Arno. Arno back to Reynolds. Oh. His slap shot, Massaro took one hard off oh. the right leg. And she gets up. Gregory Campbell style from a few years oh, ago. Oh boy, that hurt me. She still looks a little bit oh. tough, but she throw a hit. <laughs> <laughs> a shot, and it oh, unable, and a penalty against the Red Hawks. Brockton escaping one there. Eleven seconds left on the power play, and Nadek. Oh boy, she took two on the shift. <laughs> I mean, that slap shot. Oh. Got that a little was cross like check. the shot heard around the world as Al Arno the third top scorer for this Red Hawk team in the box for a minute and 30 for cross checking. Four on four for 10 seconds. Now five left on Atten's penalty. That expires. Brought in on a pedal, uh, power play for one minute and 17 seconds. Oh, look out. We're going to have another round. A shoving match ensues, Anthony Paul. And we're going to have, I believe, offsetting minors. Elbowing. An elbow against the Red Hawks. And a cross check against Anthony Paul. Sean Harney to the box for elbowing. Anthony Paul for being Oh, he steps pest. right in there, too. Ref stepped in, did his job, make sure we didn't have any shenanigans after the whistle. And I'm sure he gave him a little bit of a warning. So offsetting minor penalties. No loss in manpower. Brought it on the power play for the next minute and 11 seconds. The two of the three leading scorers for the Red Hawks are in the box. Sean Harney with 23 points on the air. He is the top scorer for the Natick Red Hawks. And Al Arno, both for north of a minute. And Anthony Paul, who is This is where I'd like to see a three-on-three, -three, Matt. I have to be honest with you. Two guys in the box shouldn't have 12 people on the ice. That's just me being me. 
after the Bruins won an overtime last night that way. Just opens things up. Sylvia Tomasaro tipped in front by El Shami. And the shot oh, from Atten deflected to the end boards. Jalen Bridges poking a Red Hawk who has it under him, and we're going to have a face off. An excellent impression of a little baby turtle trying to find his legs on top of the puck. Horn sounds and the ref has some explaining to do on the penalties. So the ref is having a discussion with the two Red Hawks in the box. Sounds like some jawing over there between the two penalty boxes. And now we're gonna have a warning to the Natick bench. Yep, so a warning to the Natick Red Hawk bench. Get your players under control. And you don't wanna get thrown out. In the last Especially game. Especially the last <laughs> game of the season, you would, if you're ejected from an MIAA matchup, you are automatically suspended. Yeah. Next two contests. And Natick already clinching a playoff berth, as are the Brockton, as have the Brockton Boxers. Don't want their two of their three leading scorers missing a playoff matchup. Yeah, no. Sylvia off the boards. At launching a shot, looking for the deflection from Bridges out in front, doesn't connect. Sylvia intercepting the clear in the neutral zone. Now Marissa Massaro. Massaro to Nathan L. Shami. 15 seconds left on the power play for the boxers. Massaro to Bridges oh. out in front off the oh. stick in. The oh rebound boy. squirted loose into the slot. Chased down by number 12, that was a Ryan good, Haslow. Good sharing chance. Maybe again. Oh, Massaro across the slot, and this one pops up wide. Back to even strength. But Harney and Anthony Paul are still in the box, serving out the remainder of their offsetting minor penalties. Back to five on five. A shot sticks in by Stagg. He covers up for the faceoff. 5.05 left to go in a fiery second period. Tempers are flaring. No well, problem it, with that. No. It's good to see that you know the, the dog has a little fight in him. Shot hitting high off glass. El Shami out into the neutral zone. Peter Sylvia dumping it into the Red Hawk zone and sent down Justin Crookshank in the boxer end of the ice. El Shami backhanding it back into the Natick end off the arm of the official. Now number nine bringing it in Robbie Pinney. And he's back hitting it out in front. A oh. shot and a goal. That was a really weird deflection. And Natick. Did he kick it in? Can we go to replay? Yeah, instant replay. The distinct kicking motion. Natick up 2 to nothing. Number 22, Charlie Mulholland. Putting this one into not quite the back of the net, but over the line. Paul and Harney are both out of the box. That was a weird bounce. Oh. Now a breakaway for Anthony Paul. His yeah. shot and a goal, and he sends the water bottle flying. Anthony Paul, fresh out of the box, and the boxers cut the lead in half. Top shelf. That was nice. And all of a sudden, we have a game again. And the boxers needed that. They needed that. Sending the water bottle flying. It was Anthony Paul. That's how he ended the game on Friday night. So it's Paul unassisted. 
And we have a game, two to one the score. Redick on top by one, 347. When we say action-packed second period, we mean it. We've seen three goals, a couple of shoving matches, a couple of offsetting Elbows, some cross-checking. A warning to the Natick bench. And we still have 347 left in the second period. Happy President's Day. Well, thank you. Same and, to you. And school vacation week. Yeah, I can't believe it's school vacation week. And this year is just flying by. And just next week, we're having our sign up for spring sports on March 1st. Frank Adden. Looking for Paul, just a little bit too far. Paul turning on the Jets. And taken now by Tucker Green. Green pressured by Jalen Bridges. Out into the neutral zone. Brockton will take over on downs. Indirect off the boards. Number 21 takes the hit to get the puck into the Brockton zone. Joey Soma. That's, that's Anthony. Nancy's playing with a little chip on his shoulder. Even though he's sick. Offsides waved off. Brockton tagging up regardless. 2.45 left to go in the second period. We've seen three goals, among many other things. Uh-oh. Good interception by Peyton Sylvia in the high oh, slot. Look out. And sliding into the bench. Might have been tripped up. We're going to have a penalty on the Red yeah. Hawks. And there is a boxer down in front of the bench. I think that's El Shami. I think that's a little boarding call. It was Justin Kirkshank that went sliding into oh, the boards. Oh, it was. Okay. Referee's having a, a discussion. It's going to be Harney again, his second penalty this period. Two for cross check. And the leading scorer of the Natick Red Hawks is in the box once again. This keeps up. He's going to have to renovate it, make him a little more homey. They have a space heater in the box next to him. Minute and 30 second penalty to Sean Harney of the Red Hawks. Brockton back on the power play. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And a short-handed oh. breakaway for number 24. His backhanded shot and a goal. Short-handed, unassisted for Al Arno. That's where I wish Stag would have come out and pl it plenty away. of time and poke it away. So 11 seconds into the power play for the boxers. And Nate putting home a shorthanded goal. Al Arno unassisted. His 10th goal of the year. He joins the Growing double digit goal scoring club for the Red Hawks. Assisted by Scott Reynolds and Dylan Arno. Dylan, his second assist today. Frank Atten, three on two, up ice for the Boxers. Atten holding on a little bit too long. We're going to have a holding call. On who? Now Arno headed to the box, so a five on three for the boxers for 57 seconds, and then Brockton will have 33 seconds of power play time. I've seen that arm go up more times today than in the past four combined. On the ice for Brockton is Frank Atten, Jalen Bridges, Anthony Paul, Zach oh, Sylvia, and Marissa Massaro. Oh, don't get Massaro. sloppy with it. Goodness gracious. Paul skating, launching oh. a slap shot off the blocker of James Herring. Brockton oh, able they to need, recover. They need to score here. Zach Sylvia down low for Atten. Atten on the boards. His oh, shot off the pad side. of Herring. Atten putting the hit to create separation. Jalen Bridges able to get the puck away. Now Sylvia's shot oh, on the rebound. Yeah. And it, oh, I, I thought, thought it went in, but so it went <laughs> just wide. Brockton able to keep it in. Zach Sylvia now launching a shot. This one off the skate. Yeah, rebound it, yeah. and the score for Jalen Bridges. 
And Brockton scoring on the five on three. Three to two, 111 left in Boy, the second period. We've got a lot of action going on here. Got a shootout. Why not? President's Day shootout right here at the ice bowl at the AZF rink. That goal from Jalen Bridges coming with 18 seconds left on the five on three. Brockton will now be on a power play for the next 50 seconds. Jalen Bridges and Anthony Paul, the two goal scorers for Brockton. And it's Bridges fighting for the puck now beyond the goal line, lifting oh, the stick. Oh, that's some good forechecking right there. That's some excellent work. And Nadek able to clear it all the way down under a minute to go. 50 seconds in the most exciting period of hockey we've seen at Asia probably this entire yeah. year. I would agree. 20 seconds left on the power play for Brockton. Number um, 18 coming up with the turnover. That's Dylan Arno. Arno shot. Glove saved by Stagg uh, on the rebound. And Stagg able to lay out and dive on top of it. 10 seconds left in the power play. 30.3 in the period. The score is 3 to 2. The Natick Red Hawks on top of the Brockton Boxers. We've seen a breakaway goal for Anthony Paul and a 5 on 3 marker for Jalen Bridges. Now a three on two up ice for Brockton. Zach Sylvia oh. with a shot. And he was oh, looking that top was, left that was corner. A good shot, too. Look out behind. Even strength. Nita calling for the offsides and not paying attention because oh. that puck was on sides. Nathan El Shamin now with 12 seconds left. Out in front, a backhanded oh. shot off the pads on the rebound attempt. Louis Goyette couldn't put it home. Oh, boy. Five seconds, three, two, and one. Nadek wow. unable to get a last second shot what off the buzzer. Period of hockey all the way around. That is an excellent period of hockey. Brockton down three to two to the Natick Red Hawks, but it's not for lack of effort, Mr. Kiro. Talk about what we saw in that second no. period and what the message is for both of these teams going into the intermission. Well, I just think that I, I like the way that the boxes battled back. I mean, they went down two nothing, and they—I mean, real easy to get down and dejected, but they came right back. And Anthony scored on the breakaway. And uh, they, they've just responded really well. Their back's been against the wall a couple of times, but they're right in it. And they had a couple of chances just there that, honestly, we should be going into a 3-3 game. If you're the coach, are you saying keep your emotions in check or, or keep it up? They, they have to play physical, but they have to play smart. No dumb penalties. You don't want to be on um, a disadvantage on the ice. Let them get sent to the box. You play physical. If they retaliate and they end up in the box, then that's... You know, bonus, but don't do anything stupid. Well, 3-2 to two, Natick over Brockton heading into the second intermission. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you third period action right after this. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Class, today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul we'll talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused. Fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it. So make it. Louise. Louise. Can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. Coach, an action-packed second period. You're down three to two. What's the strategy going into the third? Uh, well, not exactly how we drew it up. You know, we want to play five on five. Uh, we want to stay out of the box. But uh, strategy is get pucks to the net. We got to find rebounds. Uh, the goal there, um, the, the second one we got was just on a rebound. So if we can get there, uh, I think we have good opportunities. Emotions running high. What's your message to the players? Stay disciplined. Uh, I told them, raise the shop focus. Doesn't matter what's said out there, uh, what's done. Just play through it. Don't look for a call. Just uh, keep fighting through it. Well, in a, a very high scoring second period, talk about what went on in the breakaway, what you saw from the bench, and what your strategy was on the five on three. 
Uh, well, I, I kind of knew he was going to go upstairs there. Uh, Anthony likes to go upstairs, and especially on a breakaway like that. He had the guy leaning. It was, uh, it was a good play. I think it was just a, kind of a lucky break. It was kind of a broken play. And uh, we'll, we'll take, it when it, take it when it comes. Coach, good luck in the third. Thank you. Hey, Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. OK, I'm on my way. Hey, guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming. We're going back Yeah. I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. It was great. OK, honey, I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in, because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, hockey fans of all ages, welcome back into AZ Afarina for third period action between the Natick Red Hawks and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. I'm joined alongside Kevin Caro, my broadcast partner for today's festivities. An action-packed electric oh. second period in which we saw an onslaught of five goals. Three for Natick, two for oh. Brockton. Boy, that's a good start. I mean, two, two offensive pushes. We've almost seen it all here today. And there's the first icing of the game. Now we have seen it all. <laughs> a five-on-three goal for Brockton. A breakaway goal for Brockton. We talked with Coach Chris Cunningham in between periods. Emotions are running high. What's the strategy? It says, be disciplined, but don't let them push you around. I agree. So the two Brockton goals, one by Anthony Paul on a breakaway. Jalen Bridges assisted by Zach Sylvia on the five on three. The three Natick goals. In no particular order, Charlie Mulholland, El Arno, and Ricky Mingolelli. Dylan Arno coming up with the turnover. His shot, oh, nice a save. stick save, and he's able to slide across the crease and dive on the rebound. A little shoving <laughs> match out in front. Most I think they, they get that pushing and shoving. That They do that on just about any play in the NHL that's close. There's a push, there's a shove, there's a glove to the face. I don't know what it's all about. Flash, the, the play's over. Cross check. Just get out of there. Nothing good is going to happen by putting your hands in somebody's face after the whistle is blown. Well, the most memorable face wash I think the NHL has ever seen was back in the 2011 Cup Final. Yep. When poor Patrice Bergeron stuck his hands in Alexander <laughs> Burrow's face and he- I think he bit him. He did, he, he <laughs> bit him. Chomped down, full force. Yeah, late, late afternoon snack. Stag with another excellent glove save. 13-25, left in the third period. Natick with a three to two lead over the Brockton Boxers. Yeah, boxers have to be real careful. I don't think they're in a position to give up anymore. Uh, they, they, they can't give up another goal. Kirkshank backhanding it off the faceoff win taken by number 12, Ryan Haswell of the Red Hawks. To get Natick wearing those slick Montreal Canadian like jerseys. Yeah, they have, they're a little, they're a cross between um, the old Nordiques and the Canadians, as I'm kind of looking at them a little closer. Two great looks. Shot blocked away by Marissa Massaro. Her fourth block, now fifth oh. block shot of the afternoon. She's got a bullseye on her. <laughs> and she comes to the bench a little bit gingerly. Her finest work so far has been that slap shot that she took right off the right oh. knee. And didn't flinch, really. Didn't just, flinch. <laughs> just got hit with the slap shot and just kept doing her thing. Icing against the Canadians. <laughs> and we'll go 200 do feet down the ice. New, if we were to design some new uniforms, would it be a trademark violation if I did the Bruin B? with Brockton on top of it. I would, I would like that, but instead of the spokes, put the boxer head in the back. 
It'd be an interesting look. I think it would be ugly. <laughs> yeah, you gotta use your imagination. <laughs> yeah, I think we're I think we're due for new unis. Well, every other team has them, why not hockey? Not every other team. Almost every other team. Off the official, Anthony Paul dumping it in, 11.45 to go in the third. If you're just joining oh Brock boy, and Community that Access. is just not a good play. That is not a good play. Stag diving Jeez, on the, the puck for the face off. If you're just joining us on this magical weekend of boxer athletics, we, this is our third hockey game. We've seen three basketball games, three state champions, two in track and field, and one in wrestling. And a 1,000 point score yesterday at, and a thousand in the gym. Point score. A turnover oh. and a glove save by Stag. Rebound to the half board. Zach Sylvia blocking the shot. Frank Atten taking a stick off the helmet. Number 10. Oh. Tucker Green is very go. liberally waving his stick around at shoulder height. Of course, he's like six foot six, so his shoulder height is <laughs> over the head of everybody oh, that's a nice else. Move. Now a two on one, a shot. Oh. And it was loose in front. Oh. oh. What a glove save by Herring and the Natick bench cheering that one on. Wow. It was there for the taking for Frank Ed, but he just couldn't get it quite high enough over the... That was a great save. Oh. And great second effort by the boxers, getting down there and crashing the net. This one popping up, a very creative self-pass for John Carr. Nice and waved off. Justin Crookshank off the boards looking for Paul. Peyton Sylvia popping it off the glass and Jalen oh. Bridges takes the hit. Bridges going down, Natick able to get it into the Brockton zone. That should have been offsides. I think he touched the puck. Jalen Bridges, nonetheless, into the Natick zone, dumping. Anthony Paul fighting for it, along with Peyton Sylvia, forward of the goal line. The defenseman all the way in, backhanding it for Peter Sylvia. Sylvia pushed off the puck by number six, Jack O'Day. There's a lot of high sticks flying around down there. Marissa Massaro goes down. Gets back up, still fighting for the puck. Natick has it. Number 20, Matt Sullivan. And Brockton with a shot over the crossbar. 9.08 to go in the third period. Sent all the way down, and another icing against okay. the Red Hawks. So this is the last week of the regular season for Boxer Athletics. Until tournament time. Until tournament time. I think It'll that we have our, week, um, so days off. our seating meetings will be on Friday for basketball, I think Saturday for hockey. We'll see where we'll be traveling. The final two matchups of the regular season here at AZ Arena for the boxer hockey team. Wednesday against the Walpole Rebels. No, it's Friday versus Mansfield. And Friday versus Mansfield. Here. Here. Yeah. Yeah, the final two. Final two. I thought you said final one. I'm sorry. I'm not paying attention. Blocker saved by Stag. Rebound to the half boards. Peter Sylvia. Popping it off the glass and fighting for it. This one squirts out to the blue line, kept in by Scott Reynolds. And just remind me next year not to have him play on back-to-back -back days again. 
The next time and we that have was back to back that... hockey and basketball games in one day. Yeah. Two days in a row. Well, that was not by design. That was Mother Nature. The bright side of it is at least hockey came first so we could thaw out in the gym. Yes. Icing yet again against the Red Hawks. Their third such of the third period. 7.45 to go in this matchup. 3-2 to two Red Hawks on top of Brockton. Very uncharacteristic second period for both these teams. Catton getting tied up and Nadick sends it all the way down. Icing waved off this time. Peyton Sylvia high off glass. Oh. Zach Sylvia blocking the shot out in front. Oh now sent across the slot. Nobody on the receiving end for Nadick. Frank Atten back ending it into the neutral zone. Now three on two into the boxer zone for the Red Hawks. Back ending it away but taken by Dylan Arno. Peyton Sylvia goes down. Right out of the slot, Arnold was unable to get a shot off, and finally able to was number 26, Ricky Mingolelli. His shot was saved by Stag, and now uh, Jalen Bridges couldn't. I grab think they're out of gas. gas. <laughs> they need a line change, or two, or three. Zach Sylvia backhanding into the zone, and Brockton does indeed change out. They opt for the Massaro line. Oh, Excellent breakup by Peyton Sylvia. You know, Matt Sullivan. He goes down. Overmatched by Peyton Sylvia. Now Frank Atten tripped oh. up. The arms stay down. Two Red Hawks colliding with each other in their own zone. A whistle, a stoppage. Brockton willingly so, changes out. Did you think that that arm should have come up? Yeah. I, th I think it was close enough. Mm -hmm. you, you never want to make a call that will determine the outcome of the game. But in that scenario, Atten was tripped up where the Broxers would have had a two-on-one. Not guaranteed oh, that they would have scored as Crookshank gets rammed into the boards. And we have an icing against the Boxers. 6.01 to go in what has been turned into a very evenly matched game here at AZF. Marissa Massaro. My, my personal oh, just getting the game puck today. Oh, nice. This one pops nice up save. and goes to the end boards. Massaro with five block shots, <laughs> taking a slap <laughs> shot off of the right leg. Getting into it with guys that are about a foot and a half taller than her. And hasn't missed a shift. And hasn't missed a shift, <laughs> not one shift. I ought to be young again. <laughs> if anything like that happened to me, I'd be right over it. Good Sam. Five fifteen to go in the third period. And I thought I was going to get on the ice this year. It, it, it's been probably 30 years since I was on skates last, and I honestly thought it's maybe not too late. it's still not too late. Take Mrs. Carroll up to, uh, to Boston Winter, the outdoor ice rink up there. No, I need I need a stick to keep my balance. <laughs> Kirkshank hard off, board, off the glass as he goes down. I may have to come out for the morning skate on Thursday. Anthony Paul, Jalen oh. Bridges, shot, stick save oh. by Herring, and he covers up for the faceoff. So maybe if they have an early morning skate on Thursday, I just may have to find a pair of skates and a stick, and then you read about me that I'm in good sale. <laughs> well, all week before the Brockton Boxers matchup, there's public skate here at AZF before the boxer matchups. Come an hour early. Yeah, I, I think I'd like to. I mean, I don't know if I talked to you about this, but I honestly believe that when I was growing up, this was my best sport. 
was hockey. When I played everything, um, but the only reason I didn't play hockey in high school is because they had a five o'clock practice time. And I didn't want to be cold and tired going to school, so I played basketball, which was, worked out great. But if I could do it all over again, I think I would have. We have a penalty to the Natick Red Hawks, number six in the box, Jack O'Day. When did we miss that? Looks Probably when like it was a over here stick. flapping my gums. We wait the official word on the penalty. Elbow. Elbowing. Well, credit to the refs for keeping this one under control. It yeah, it could have gotten ugly. Got I, I, re I really think period. that it could have gotten ugly, and you never want to see somebody get thrown out and have their tournament ruined. Uh, but they've stepped right in, and i got to commend them for doing a good job. Anthony Paul to Zach Sylvia. Minute and a half penalty to Jack O'Day for elbowing. 3.50 left to go in the third period. Now 50 seconds left on the boxer power play. Oh, look out. This is where you cannot afford to get sloppy. Atten saucer pass complete to Massaro. Into the boxer zone, leaving it behind for Crookshank. Rather, it's Jalen Bridges. Three boxers fighting for it. Bridges comes away with it. That's one thing I've noticed with the with the Natick um, penalty kill. They're very aggressive. I mean, they are extremely. They come out and meet the puck. They don't let the boxers get set up in in the the typical fashion. So they've really done a nice job, and they've actually scored a goal short-handed. And I think that has a lot to do with them just being aggressive and taking it right at them. O'Day out of the box, back to even strength. Icing against the boxers. 2.51 to go in the third period. 3-2, to two, Natick on top. I'm going to take this stoppage to thank our cameraman for today's festivities. For the sixth time this holiday weekend, it is the one, the only Mike the Postman Simmons. Yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. Yes, the Postman even delivers on the holidays. Kirkshank trying to play the body on number 12, Ryan Haswell. Taken by Sean Harney. Harney has been a pest to the Brockton Boxers, and he's found himself in the penalty bench more often than not today. Kind of reminds me of you when you're in my social studies class back at East. Absolutely. I aim to be memorable. <laughs> Out in front oh. of shot, and it deflected off of a skate. Natick with a little bit of momentum off the stick of Stag into his helmet and back loose. A little bit of a slew foot by Justin Crookshank. The arms stay down. Nathan El Shami backhanding it off the boards into the neutral zone. And a shot from 150, 100 feet away. Saved by Adam Stagnone. One minute and 50 seconds to go in the third period. Massaro blocking the pass. Shocking. <laughs> Dylan Arno behind the net giving it to number 24, Al oh, They Arno. need to have a push here. They're going to have to do something to just slow down this tipping of the ice here. They're going to have to clear the zone and maybe catch their breath. Massaro with it behind Adam Stagnone. Leaving it behind is Massaro. Yeah. Oh, 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 a shot at a goal, yeah. number 18, Dylan Arno. Yeah, I saw that coming. Hate to say I saw it, but they were too tired. They needed to clear that puck out to get the line change. And Stagnone that was, left a little bit too much room yeah, between that, his pad and the post. Yeah, that was fatigue. That brings us to 4-2, Natick on top. That goal scored by Dylan Arno, his third of the year. He adds that to an assist on the day to bring him to 16 points on the season. Jalen Bridges now into the Red Hawk zone. So Ricky Mingolelli and Al Arno on the assist to Dylan Arno's goal. Anthony Paul backhanding it to Crookshank now to Sylvia. 
One minute to go in the third period. Brockton's going to pull the goalie stag known to the bench for the extra skater. Oh, good glove save. And Natick's bench once again comes alive as James Herring makes a very good save. Marissa Massaro is the extra skater. No surprise there. Well, I think Natick's going to be glad to get on the bus and get out of Dodge with a win. I don't think they expected this at all. And you see that record that isn't that great. And I think it's... Oh. Your foot off the post. Oh. And because that doesn't count as a shot, it's going to be icing against the Red Hawks. A 175-foot shot from the Natick faceoff dot hitting the right post and spinning out. Missed, missed out on the Bruins autograph team shirt. That's what they do with the Bruins now. They you shoot from each line, and it progress. You get a. It starts off with a picture, a stick, and then if you make one from the other end, you get the team jersey. Might have to try that. It's been a while since I've wielded a hockey stick. Brockton calling their timeout with 42.8 seconds to go. 4-2 lead for the Natick Red Hawks. The goals. Scored by Dylan Arno, Charlie Mulholland, L. Arno, and Ricky Mingolelli in no particular order. The Brockton goals, Anthony Paul and Jalen Bridges. Fox has had plenty of opportunities today to, to come away with a win. They played well enough in that second period where I honestly thought they were going to go in 3-3. and That's the game of hockey. Absolutely. Well, we take the stoppage to remind you that Brockton Community Access is on Twitter. Follow us. We are at the Brockton Channel. All one word, no capitals or spaces. You can find live scoring updates of boxer sporting events there. Yeah, one of the things that we put together last week, for those of you listening and watching, we have a Facebook page. It's Brockton High Athletics, so we'll try to update that as well with all the latest happenings and Notifications and milestones because we do have those track athletes going to the All New Englands this week and the wrestling team as well trying to take home some New England titles, which would really be something. Now that you guys are searching us on Twitter, follow at boxer underscore sports. Yeah, we, we're pretty some proud pictures. that we have uh, close to 400 people following us on Twitter. Massaro gloving this one down at the blue line. Makes a nice move. Shoots it across the crease. A shot and a glove save by James Herring, who has been very strong yeah, he's, today. Yeah, he's been, he's been solid. And, boy, just think, only a sophomore. Got two more years ahead of him. Game's coming off the schedule next year, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll play him once. <laughs> good job by Justin Crookshank to negate that. Breakaway oh, opportunity good. and boxes sliding down to the end boards. That was Marissa Massaro. A shot by Atten and yet another glove save by Herring. 7.1 to go and barring a few small miracles, Natick will come out of here with a victory. A certainly well fought victory. Yeah. And like you mentioned earlier, they're going to be happy to get Just on the bus get and on travel the bus down and Route get 9. Out, get out of Dodge. Buzzer I have Peter's to say, shot goes to the end boards. They, they put up a good fight today, even to that very last shot, which is encouraging. Well, the final score, 4-2, to two, the Natick Redhawks getting the victory. The difference was the third period goal by Al Arno. Yeah, and that was a fatigue goal. Honest to goodness, that line had been out there for a long shift, and they just couldn't clear the puck out of the zone. What was a goaltending duel at the end of the first turned into... Yeah. An onslaught of scoring and yep. emotional distress in the second. And in the third, it was pretty evenly matched. Talk about the effort put forth today by the boxers and what they have to do to spread the emotions out over the entire game yep. as opposed to just one period. Uh, I think that Chris has done a good job with, uh, with the team. I mean, they have definitely showed improvement since the beginning of the year. And just keeping the, the penalties to a minimum... And just the mental mistakes. I think that that last goal was a little bit mental. 
Um, a couple goals that we saw today that they let in. Kind of soft, but, you know, I'm very pleased with the way that they hung in there and, and went until the the horn sounded. Well, 4-2 to two the final score. The Natick Red Hawks once again getting the victory over the Brockton Boxers. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access Sports, our cameraman, Mike the Postman Simmons, my broadcast partner, Kevin Caro. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.